Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for this conversation with uh, Julie Meretu. Um, my name is Camille Uze. I'm a curator and I've spent the past three years researching on Dubuffet for the exhibition uh, Jean Dubuffet Brutal Beauty, which uh, opened on the 17th of May at the Barbican in London. Uh, the show is on until the 22nd of August, so I hope that you will have a chance to see it as uh, this is the first uh, large-scale exhibition on Dubuffet in the UK for more than 50 years. Um, the conversation tonight uh, is part of a strand of the public program in which we wanted to uh, celebrate Dubuffet's legacy by um, inviting contemporary artists to discuss their relationship with Dubuffet and the influence that he might have had on their practice. Um, this evening, I'm delighted to welcome the internationally acclaimed artist Julie Meretu, who I'm sure you already know, but in case you need a little introduction, Meretu was born in 1970 in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, and she now lives in New York, um, where she's currently the subject of a mid-career survey at the Whitney Museum of American Art, uh, which was previously shown at uh, LACMA in LA and the High Museum in Atlanta. Uh, Meretu is known for her large-scale paintings and uh, drawings, which uh, combine a wide range of media and techniques, um, ranging from gestural abstraction to digital mark-making, uh, through which she addresses the experiences of uh, colonialism, uh, displacement, uh, cultural identity, and racial inequality, but also and this may be the, the focus of our conversation tonight, um, the artistic and cultural modalities that enable the production of the new. Uh, Meritu's work has been exhibited internationally in museums, uh, galleries, and biennials, including uh, the Museum of Modern Art, the Guggenheim, the Hammer Museum, SF MoMA, Ketter's Yard in Cambridge, uh, the Serralves Museum in Porto, the Venice Biennale, Documenta, and many more. <coughs> Meritu received many awards, and in 2005, she was the recipient of the American Art Award from the Whitney Museum, as well as the prestigious MacArthur Fellows Award. In 2015, she was awarded the U.S. Department of State Medal of Arts Award. So the format for this evening will be pretty simple. Um, Julie and I will have a conversation for about uh, 40 minutes and then we'll take the time to answer some questions from the audience. So if you have any, please put them in the chat and we can come to them at the end. Uh, Julie, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you tonight. Uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation to talk about Dubuffet as I know you've been really busy lately. Um, and I, I might start to, to give a little bit of context on uh, the, the, the reason why uh, I had the idea of uh, inviting you today. Um, during my research on Dubuffet, um, I discovered that you, selecting, that you selected a painting by Dubuffet, um, and I think it was uh, Will to Power uh, from 1946. Um, in the section, uh, Cry Gold and See Black that you curated as part of the exhibition um, artistic license at the Guggenheim in New York. Um, in an interview, you mentioned being interested in the, 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 the tension between trauma and the possibility in the post-war period. And uh, I, I, I was wondering whether you could uh, tell us what interested you particularly in uh, in uh, in the work of Dubuffet, you know, in that context, and uh, and uh, how you you maybe discovered Dubuffet in the first place. Um, well, thank you for the invitation and for being a part of the conversations that you're having. Um, I wish I could be there to see the exhibition. To be honest, <laughs> um, I hope that can change soon. Yeah. When does it close? Sorry. When it's does it close? The twenty second of August. Yes, you never know. Maybe so there's a bit of time, you know. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see how, what is what is permitted. Um, but <clears throat> I guess I first ran and uh, came into Dubuffet's work when I was a young, young artist, and I think um, <clears throat> there was something very intriguing about this this kind of in, interest in this kind of childlike 
way of making. And I was super curious about the materiality of his work when he, when I was younger, the kind of um, using kind of this kind of detritus in a way to make stuff mm -hmm. and to like, and the, and the, and the, and the form of like, um, reverting to a different kind of mark making. And in a way, it, there was always the kind of, uh, the figure and somehow, uh, or different aspects of the figure in, in addition to the kind of immersion and abstraction or this kind of network of lines and marks <clears throat> and scratching and kind of incising. But I was always interested in, and found my, and found myself interested in, 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 in these artists who really tried to, in a way, it was, it was po the, after the post-war moment, it felt like you had this kind of disillusionment with the whole idea of like 20th century progress and mm -hmm. that, that was in the midst of really being developed. And, and we, and I feel like it's, it's interesting because we're kind of, especially post the pandemic kind of re, um, not even post the pandemic, in the midst of a pandemic, we're in this moment of really trying to um, make sense of that and, and are experiencing in many places that same form of disillusionment, um, but under, under for different, in, in certain ways for different reasons, but not really that different, even in terms of time from the last century. And I wonder like about those ideas of these kind of tropes of progress or the kind of compartmentalization that so much of modern thought kind of had that Dubuffet seemed to really respond against. And many artists worked, that I was interested in for the Guggenheim show, worked against these, um, the, this, this kind of, the extreme violence that was witnessed um, and mayhem that was witnessed by, during that, during the, during the wars. And, and, <clears throat> and what, 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 how do you structure something post that moment? But then also um, the other side of that, was this was be, this was work that was really trying to live inside the complete contradictory reality of a colonial condition as well, and participating in a dominant colo state, colonial state, uh, uh, really or fundamentally, while at also wanting to kind of subvert and 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 work it, it like build or make in a life of disobedience and one that wants to challenge power. So those. Those two, that contradiction of, of looking for a way to return to some pure essence or not even pure, but this essence of like trying to invent language from, from, from behavior and from instinct as opposed to from cultural learning. But, but, and, and then looking to all these forms of colonial encounters for that form of cultural learning and then, or, or decult to, to try and find some place of deculturalized yeah, learning. Yeah. It's a really con complex contra and, and it's, it's just, thing space filled with contradictions so i'm always that's the place that i have been interested in and working from living in that space um and i think and i think what i was interested in with a lot of these kind of um artists who were trying to invent something post that moment was about how you try to invent anything that can that can that, that is actually constantly dealing with the reality of the existentialism that was kind of like the, the the environment that people were living in you know so yeah yeah yeah, yeah and i think you know that there's something uh, uh, really interesting you know happening at that moment is that uh, I think artist and intellectual, you know, begins to 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 lose faith in reason, you know, in a way, like thinking that yeah. you know it's maybe like the over emphasis, you know, on uh, reason, you know, that might have you know led us to like the disaster of of the war, you know, and uh, um, artistically speaking, you know, you see a lot of them representing the body as like. Uh, like very like fragmented, you know, or yeah. in the in in the case of Dubuffet, uh, and maybe we can show the, the the painting that you you selected in that exhibition, you know, which is very evocative, you know, of the of that moment, you know, for him, I think it was also about like um, thinking that you know culture, you know, like the notion of culture, you know, might have been you know like responsible as well, you know, like for that situation, and that's. Uh, in his work, you know, he wanted to reconnect, you know, with like the raw materiality, you know, like, and even as he was saying, you know, like the rehabilitation of the mud, you know, like in a way, you know, like maybe a reconnection, yeah. you know, with uh, um, uh, like sort of like primal instinct, you know, or more like uh, something uh, related to uh, intuition, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think there, there, there's that on one hand, and 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 then there's uh, the 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 drive, you know, towards uh, abstraction, you know, like as well, uh, and maybe the need to find like new means of expression, you know, like before unprecedented situations, you know, um, and I. I think you know I'm, I'm I'm I was also quite interested you know in your in your work in relation to Dubuffet exactly for that relationship you know with like representation and language you know and how you sometimes like discuss abstraction uh, as a way you know to uh, either you know sort of like produce marks that precede language or produce a sort of visual. Uh, uh, vocabulary that expands beyond language, you know, like something like that. Um, hmm. is, is, is this something you kind of like r relate to or? Yeah, I think that <clears throat> actually, I think that it's really related. I mean, a lot of the mark making and my, my history with mark making and drawing has, has come from this place of trying to really make sense of the mark. And I don't think of the mark for, in the way that I work with it, although it does exist this way at times, as an expressive kind of mark, but it is completely expressive while, while being that. And, and I guess what I mean by that is, I don't see the gestures and the mark as being this kind of internal expression on the canvas. I really feel like it is more, it goes through a different kind of, uh, it goes through a different process than that. And part of that is in the same way that um, written language can be somewhat expressive, it has a really different, it goes through this filter filter of of of, of syntax and of and mm. of con construction and yeah. um and there's a rig there's a logic to how we communicate and I think that that's something that I think through a lot in terms of uh, the visual making of an image that it that that in painting and in drawing or in any of the work that I'm doing there is this constant awareness of the history of the logic of of an image and then the kind of spatial the kind of the the logic that has emerged from within the work and the, mm -hmm. and the, and my making of this work, so that that so that certain marks to become and be, start start to be read in particular ways, or they operate spatially in other ways, or they yeah. are deniers of that. So they so I'm really interested in those forms of kind of behavior that can be as, associated with the marks, and then in that sense they start to take on this kind of resemblance to language or this mm -hmm. kind of resemblance to code and and ways of us understanding and and and. I think we see that all the time in the world. Like right now you'll see, it's so interesting to see these new forms of language emerging for, um, the, for the COVID moment, like mm. three dots next to one another together, t together, stronger together, something like that. Or like, yeah, you know, yeah. how you, what, a, what, what an image is for a Mac or social distance and, and, and these kinds of, these kinds of signs and, that, that, that materialize and that we become, uh, we start to understand of these different kinds of codifications. And a close friend of mine was talking to me about that recently. We were going through some of them. And it's really interesting if you think about how quickly we've come to understand what the Bluetooth yeah. signal looks like and what the Wi Fi, what it works with. Like we can really like intuitively negotiate even signs we have never seen through this knowledge of. Yeah, yeah. And I think like, for me, I think there's this history that we have encountered in this, and I study, have studied painting for so long and I think anyone who really is immersed in, in looking, whether it's painting or whether or not, that, that, that we have this visual language that is there for all of us that we negotiate daily and with everything that we do, even probably more so now with our phones in a, in a different way. And I think that, 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 you know, the way that I play with that language is, um, is to know that there isn't something that is purely a new invented mark, but that mm -hmm. it's all kind of, and this is interesting, I, it's a question for you, that, that like in many ways, it's trying to exist in between all these spaces of culture. But for Dubuffet, there was really this desire to, 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 to like think in a decultured way, to like remove the idea of culture. Whereas the way that I'm working with marks is really a way to think of the marks to become these kind of visual neologisms where there's this constant yeah. new, um, information that's being put together by these history of marks and or new vocabulary being put together by these in order to try and negotiate this moment and it with within the way that I'm thinking of this sociality in a different way through the through the visual but I guess that's the question that I have for you is how how much did was, was Dubuffet like how was he really because you bring this up in your text about the kind of decultured desire in his in the invention of his language and this insistence on that and how much of that 
I find, again, this interesting question around the colonial and the history of what is the common man and how is, how is that negotiated? And, you know, I think it's an interesting time to think about that also just in relationship to France or Europe right now and all of us in our re- yeah, realities yeah. of this kind of mass fear around migration and who, who's a citizen and who isn't and what, and so the questions that come up around that. But yeah. you could like, yeah, talk about that a little bit. With yeah, yeah, to yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, it's really, uh, I often use, you know, the word project, you know, after like his anti-cultural kind of position. Yeah. I think it was really a project, you know, it's, it's something that yeah. uh, leads you to think through a lot of paradoxes in a way, you know, and uh, yeah. He, he, he admitted himself, you know, that you can never actually, you know, like uh, uh, sort of like get out of culture completely, you know, or de-culture yeah. yourself completely, you know. So there was on, 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 on one hand, you know, like his kind of fascination with what he was calling the common man, you know, like uh, this was in his early career, you know, he found that um, maybe, you know, you could find something more authentic, you know, like by uh, talking to like people in the streets, uh, and 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 try to make works, you know, that uh, they might be able to understand. And then he tried, you know, like uh, many different tactics, you know, like throughout his career. Yeah. You know, like uh, uh, he tried to write, you know, in jargon, you know, like in sort of phonetic, uh, so that you couldn't, you could no longer kind of recognize, you know, like the words. You had to read them out loud. Um, then, you know, there was, of course, you know, like all his uh, collection of art brut, you know, when he made like a lot of research, yeah. like works made by uh, non-professional artists. But I think uh, for, for, for Dubuffet, you know, it was uh, uh, always a, a, a desire, you know, to kind of like uh, uh, escape, you know, like the confine of culture, like what he was calling like cultural conditioning, you know, like in a way. He, he, he really considered that uh, culture was kind of circumscribing, you know, like your way of thinking. And it was uh, always kind of um, preventing uh, the, the, the emergence of something new, you know, or, some, some, yeah. or something unprecedented, you know. Yeah. Now, now I think uh, it remains uh, theoretical, you know, to, to, to a large extent. You know, I think it was his project, you know, I think he tried many ways, you know, to reach that kind of, a cultural or decultured kind of space. I'm not entirely sure, you know, he succeeded completely, but at least in the process, you know, he certainly, you know, like invented a few things, you know, and uh, made us think about, you know, like culture in a different way. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's how I would maybe answer your 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 question. Um, then in relation to like colonialism, it's a bit more complicated with Dubuffet because he was not necessarily talking about that. Uh, he yeah. traveled a lot in Algeria. Uh, he did like <clears throat> trips in Algeria in the in the 1940s, you know, so which was still like a, a French colony at the time. Yeah. And uh, and again, you know, there's something quite paradoxical in his behavior, you know, because in the during the first trips, he's really like amazed by the people there, you know, like how they live and he tries to learn uh, Arabic, you know, even, even learn like Arabic dialects, you know, and uh, he, he writes letters, you know, to say like uh, that uh, some of the drawings that these people are making are way better than anything you might see in a museum in Europe and so on. Uh, but but at the end, you know, like once he's been like kind of exploring, you know, that new culture for him, you know, like he he, he says like, well, it seems that I'm th- there's always a sort of like space, you know, or, or limit, you know, that he can't sort of like uh, pass, you know, like in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and in the end, he says like, well, it was an amazing experience, but, you know, I, I don't think I have anything uh, more to do there, you know, but it has largely informed his work, you know, and and. Uh, notably, you know, he's thinking of landscape, you know, and uh, the, the sort of like really reconnection with uh, the land, you know, like in a way by being in the desert, you know, so yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, it's so interesting because also um, another kind of um, aspect of living in those, that living in that, in that situation, this desire to like um, think of culture as this kind of circumscribing, like this aspect of trying to like um, find a way to, seek liberation at, at, in a way that works against 
the kind of um, program of culture. And when you think about, and, and I think it comes, it's really different what ha ended up happening from my feeling in terms of the modern movement here in the United States. And what took place was really taking that idea of the deculture to an extreme. Like, so when you could think about Donald Judd and the most minimalist gesture of a cube or a square or being able to reduce yeah. something to, um, you know, the Robert Ryman kind of paintings where they're really just about them, their own, their own reality, their own, like mm -hmm. this, this one color and being able to find the kind of most minute gestures within that. Um, and, and that history of that, it seemed to take the idea of that kind of compartmentalization of the rational or the, the, and the, and the reduction of like something that could be decultured, um, without any spirit in it. Like it seemed to want to remove any kind of human spirit in that way from the work and, um, or enchantedness. And Dubuffet doesn't feel that way at all. Dubuffet's insistence is on the enchanted in, a, in this weird way and is, in, is, is on the insistence of this other aspect of, of being, which it, which, Brings up for me, and what I what I thought, what it reminded me of is I, um, this quote that James Baldwin has about when in that letter to his nephew that basically, in order to be free, everybody has to this ha like in order to, for everyone in the U.S. to be free, racism as 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 a as a whole structure has to be dismantled for everyone's sense of liberation, and. I'm interested in that space, in that contradiction with Dubuffet of living within this place, like you brought up with Algeria, living within the colonial, but still insisting and knowing of this other space of, of enchantedness or whatever you want to call it, the space of this other form of, of, in, of belief in this other form of connectivity and, and unknowing. And the kind of rat and the kind of structure that so much uh, modern thought and, and compartmentalization in terms of reason and ration, uh, rationale and um, logic and the kind of story within that and, and the kind of paradox of those two things. I'm just I'm really interested in that, in how that Baldwin quote relates to this desire of, of mining liberation through mark making it, it, by being but one part a colonial subject, no matter what, and, and, and how that how those structures of culture then become these structures of power and how do you, how does one look for that? I mean, so for me, that's, that was just an interesting kind of thought process when you were talking about um, yeah. that side of his, of thinking of culture in those two different ways. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, if he, if he, if he never addresses, you know, these questions, you know, he, he tries to really avoid, you know, like addressing any kind of a real world, you know, like question or real world event, you know, like, uh, yeah. But, in his uh, in his thinking, you know, like uh, and uh, you know, in the essay I wrote for the catalog, you know, I'm kind of writing about that. You know, is that there's a sort of like uh, politics, you know, embedded in his writing and 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 even in his aesthetics, you know, which is like you know this this uh, desire to decategorize things, you know, like to kind of exactly because categories, you know, is something uh, really inherited and 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 structured by reason, you know, so it's uh, the mm -hmm. heritage enlightenment you know like in a way you know like looking at things giving them a name you know so they have their space mm -hmm. and so on. um and and i think you know dubuffet was really uh trying to kind of like see the world anew you know see the continuity between things by extension you know if you think about that you know like it can be quite conceptual when you're talking about categories and so on but by extension basically it's the same as when you look at someone you know, like when you look at someone else, you know, it's either you identify it as the other, you know, with a big O, you know, or, you know, you kind of think that there is a sort of uh, uh, intertwining, uh, you know, like or, or something that, you know, uh, uh, connects you to, 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 to that person. And, and that, you know, by extension, can, uh, you can think about, you know, how you think uh, uh, about like uh, races, about uh, uh, other countries, you know, about like every, everything, you know. So I, I, yeah. I find it's very crucial, you know, in a way. Uh, I don't think it's always mentioned, you know, like the importance of the methodology, you know, in addressing these questions and the 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 the, the idea of categories, the, the concept of categories is very crucial, I think, you know. Uh, Absolutely. And and even the compartmentalization of the yeah. history of that in terms of um, it, it, like like whatever it was, the kind of compartmentalization of architecture and art and uh, astrology and astronomy and 
you know, farming, like these became these very, very specialized, highly specialized forms of thought and, and understanding and, and the kind of interconnectedness of that, of, of, if, if you want to think of it as a pre-colonial form of knowledge building and world building is a very different, comes from a very intertwined, interconnected way of, of knowing. And I love this kind of decategorized effort in the phase in that effort of trying to get somewhere be, and, and the kind of intuitive knowledge that there's something about um, a new form of knowledge building from that space. Yeah. Um, and I, and to me, I think it's really interesting also to think about both of those as I, I was as reading something recently and thinking recently around the futurist and the kind of the, the, the and the speed of that moment in Mark making, but the kind of and fascination around possibility of mm -hmm. utopia within that and then the failure the complete utter failure and and breakdown of that and then these artists like Dubuffet working from the from the remnants of that from the from yep. the kind of failures of those aspirations in 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 and in, 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 in trying to do some other form of world building that yep. is insistent on a, on a, on a, on, a, on, on, on the continuation of something. And that's that, and, and I don't mean to speak ab abstractly or obtusely, but I do think that's a very, you know, it brings to me ideas around Glissant and ideas that have been coming uh, up a, a lot recently about bigger senses of world building, planetary world building, and like the kind of bigger condition of blackness as like a condition of, mm -hmm. The glo of, of the planetary. And to me that there's, in order to get to this other space of n nurturing or world building or, or, or making sense of things, there is this, there is this acknowledgement of that paradox and that contradiction and how, how does, how does language continue? How do you try to work against that with, while being, while working in the middle of that? So that, that contradiction of trying yeah, to yeah, shift yeah. something by being immersed in it and at the same time, knowing that you have to be immersed in it in order to do a different form of world building. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a back and forth, you know, like in a way, you know, like uh, you have to walk from within it, you know, but at the same time, you know, always trying to kind of uh, expand beyond, you know, or think beyond. But th this makes me think as well about, you know, I think you mentioned something about like the space of unknowing, you know, like uh, yeah. I for 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 Dubuffet, it was quite a lot about that, you know, like uh, uh, decategorizing, you know, like decompartmentalizing. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. I managed to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of a way to to reach uh, a, a space of unknowing, or or at least as a, a space at the frontier between knowledge and non-knowledge, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I think you know to 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 mention someone else, you know, like uh, 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 Gilles Deleuze, you know, the philosopher was always saying, you know, that. Uh, an artist, you know, should always walk, you know, like on this frontier, you know, on this boundary, you know, like between knowledge and non-knowledge. And that is what it was from from this place, you know, that uh, you might have a chance to create something new or to, as he was saying, you know, create a new people, you know, because like the ideas you have them some, sometimes, you know, but then you also need to, uh, you know, sort of condition, you know, the, the, the movement, you know, toward emancipation, you know, through like accepting these new ways of uh, thinking, uh, perceiving the world or world building, as you were saying. Um, does, does, does that make sense? Yeah, uh, I, and I, I think so much of it is about um, trying to, um, trying to, in, ma it's, it, in a way, there's this aspect of like radical imagining, right? And I think that to me, it's interesting that there, that, that there are certain conditions that really create that. And there are moments like, you know, in this country, I think there's, it, there's a lot of that around ideas of emancipation and the kind of structured, like the, the structure around um, the systemic racism and, 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 and all forms of kind of cla classism or whatever you want to think of it as, because it's so multifarious, but the, the kind of, the kind of, in, the, the real structure of working against that, when you're dealing with a history of apartheid, like in this country, or a history of Jim Crow or history, you have to really negotiate that in a very different way. And I think in Europe, that history comes from a very kind of, um, historic, like, I, aspect of culture within class. And you have this very kind of, very particular ways of, or modes of being that are prescribed by class and by land ownership or by whatever it is that, that that have these very particular ways of educating and and all of that is thought of as that kind of cultured space and how does one kind of negotiate or find other alternatives within that and I and and so 
to me, I find what I'm interested in is that space of that kind of, you, you mentioned it also in your text, this kind of space of, uh, of, of, of where the kind of, it's this hybrid space of where, 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 where the discarded or something else can, something else can emerge from within that. But that emergence is not necessarily the de not denial or demolition of everything, but it's like oh. how to, it's, it's, a, it's about a different kind of invention. And yeah. it's not necessarily brand new invention, but it's the insistence or recognition of something that exists despite every effort to extinguish it. And that's what I think um, is, is, so, is so interesting about the, uh, the kind of emergence of, of language. And if you think about it with the music, you see music as this kind of constantly Form it, formative as thing that is constantly being mutated and shifted. And the neologism seems so appropriate in that, in terms of sound, like you hear all forms of hybrid ways of inventing and, and working with sound and getting to different kind of places to insist on this other kind of aspect. And some artists I think would think of that in terms of like John Coltrane and others, like as a form of a language of universality. And I don't know that we talk that way anymore, but it comes, but that desire comes from this space where again, it's, in the face of Jim Crow, the kind of belief and insistence and knowing in the space of denial of all aspects of being human, this kind of insistence on that and, and being able to access that in this other plane. And I, so in all cases, what I find also interesting is kind of the desire to look elsewhere to find that, whether it's the outsider artists or the children yeah. or yeah. Um, other countries or with Coltrane, Buddhism and the, yeah. and the aspect of travel and new forms of, you know, invention. So to me, I, I don't know, again, it comes that, that with something else that, 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 that I think also goes back to Deleuze and these ways, I mean, Deleuze and again, Glissant and this way of the, the multitude and kind of how there isn't anything that isn't kind of constantly being informed by all of those experiences to then yeah, do something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, you know, like you, uh, you talked about music, which which is very interesting as well. You know, in relation to to du Buffet, you know, because uh, uh, du Buffet was really fond of jazz. You know, he painted like he did many paintings. You know, representing jazz bands. You know, in the 1940s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, he he wrote about jazz. You know, he saw it as a kind of form of like improvisation or experimentation through which you know you could somehow as well you know escape. Uh, culture, but also, you know, in relation to music, you know, the sort of like musical sentence or musical argument, you know, the way that yeah. you would write a score. Um, and I, I've, I've seen, uh, while I was researching for this talk, you know, I watched this uh, video, you know, that was made uh, um, while you were making your commission for SF MoMA, you know, like the yeah. owl painting, and there's uh, Jason Moran, you know, who is playing, yeah. you know, like while you're painting. I, I, I found that very interesting because, um, you know, there's a tradition of uh, music, you know, in abstraction, you know, if you think of like Kandinsky, yeah. you know, and Gorky and so on. And um, I, I, I was actually wondering, you know, how you like, is it something, you know, you think about when you paint or, or is it like uh, something that uh, helps you while you're painting? Is it? <laughs> it can. <laughs> I, I, you know, I pay, I listen usually to something. What, and I used yeah. to listen to only music. And it does, and there are certain types of music that will be very evocative for a particular kind of place. But, but it's weird, like I also, there's this aspect of mark making and the, when I want to really get um, into that space of trying to invent something else in the work is there's this desire of getting into this kind of disembodied state. Where the disembodied hand kind of can 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 go where it goes through it through intuition and through history of making and repetition, but I think that there's something to be that happens in that space of unknowing and intuitive knowledge, and it's the space of that's in between those two. And I think it's part of that. Uh, it, I don't know. It's a, it's not an effort to unlearn. So unknowing is not necessarily about trying to re like remove knowledge, but mm -hmm. it's knowing that there's more that is unknown and that yeah. there's this precipice and not trying to define that, but knowing that within that there's logic and language and knowledge. And how does, how does one, even if we don't have language for it, how does one maybe we access that? And there are times where we have a sense of th something and that can be informed in the body. It can be informed um, 
by kind of uh, embodied experience, you know, and we, we know this about trauma. We know like generations of survivors of trauma, even as though they might not have experienced that trauma, have, have the embodied kind of realities of that. And, yeah, yeah. and I think, and so I'm super interested in, 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 in what is into, like what forms or guides or, or uh, intuition and, and that place of making and going into that kind of, de I call it sometimes the decultured hand, but mm -hmm. there's no way, like there's no real, way for that right and 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 i like as and as a matter of fact it, it is kind of the insistence on culture and the insistence on the kind of multitudes of, of what makes that up and the many kinds of, of forms of knowledge building that kind of engage with um that different kind of image making and so in trying to make paintings or abstract paintings that are able to kind of you know, exist in a way that can be somewhat transformative in the moment, but also respond very much to this moment or me making sense of, of, of trying to make paintings in this moment. It, it, it becomes this, you know, place of, of listening a lot and making and, and, and trying to find different ways to get lost in that in, in, in terms of knowledge or in terms of like consciousness, in terms of like deliberate um, brain to hand consciousness. And so, uh, music is a re really important way to do that. But for me, it's also, I listen to books on tape. I listen to readings. I listen to courses. I listen to podcasts. I listen to so much now. And um, and it, uh, it's all very much a formative aspect. Working with Jason, as you mentioned, was such an incredible experience because he and I weren't trying to make each other's work in one medium or another. Like I wasn't trying to make what he was playing in, in Marx. And I don't think he was interested in playing, but we were making side by side. And when you're making side by side, sometimes that informs each other and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you're not in sync and sometimes you are. And to me, the most amazing moments was when I, I was drawing or painting or really lost in it. And he was like working on his thing. And there were a moment when we're both so in it that you can almost, when I was listening, it was almost listening to like a new sense that was being born, like a different sense that yeah. is not taste, smell or anything, but is this other sense of, of hearing what you're making, which is a really weird thing because we're not making each other's thing at all. And so, <laughs> you know, it's an interesting space to, to, to investigate. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a dialogue. But if if you don't know, you know, Dubuffet also made music. You know, like in the 1960s. You know, like uh, it's it's very experimental. Oh, wow. Yeah, very uh, noisy. You know, like uh, he was really trying to. He did with Asger Yorn. You know, like uh, uh, oh uh, yeah, really is like six vinyls. You know, like in the in the 1960s actually. Uh, I will look for those. I didn't uh, know. Yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. But that's also that's also another interesting kind of parallel with this with the concept of noise or the, or the place of like how how one is trying to invent new sound that that really is trying to go elsewhere and I think you really see that in um, in a lot of traditions of radical forms of making or black or like hi historic radical spaces of, of 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 trying to invent new space for for not for deculture, but for culture. That's what I find super yeah, interesting yeah. about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, one one last question I was uh, maybe interested, like uh, it's uh, it's crazy. It's already been 40 minutes we are talking, you know, like so. <laughs> Talk like that for hours, but, you know, then we might uh, leave some space for, for, for questions. Okay. Uh, but it's, um, I think, you know, you have a very, uh, and, and it's in relation to, to Dubuffet and his constant, you know, back and forth between uh, figuration and abstraction uh, in relation to, you know, this desire, you know, to uh, deculture himself or, you know, to, to kind of experience, right. experiment with different means. And, uh, um, you know, your paintings appear uh, like mostly abstract, visually speaking, you know, but uh, you also incorporate like photographs, you know, of uh, relevance uh, as uh, underpaintings, uh, mm. explicitly, explicitly referring to like a uh, real world event and places in their titles. Um, Dubuffet found the term abstraction very uh, problematic in a way, you know, it was always yeah. thinking that uh, whenever he was painting something that looked abstract, you know, like to him, he was just trying to represent uh, an object, you know, in a different way, you know, or to grasp its yeah. energy or its intensity, you know, like uh, in a way. And I, I was just wondering, you know, like uh, uh, how do you deal with this kind of uh, 
relationship between uh, figuration, figuration and abstraction, or, or maybe to put it in another way, between documentation and speculation. You know, like uh, in the in the in the same painting. You know, like documenting a space, yeah. but at the same time speculating. Is it a way of like, like Dubuffet would say, like decategorizing the real, or or is it like? A, a way to kind of uh, um, enhance our capacity to to understand the complexity of, of of the situation of the territories you know that you're representing. It's so interesting because I don't really. It's a great question, and I don't I I, I don't ever really think of the paintings as representing something, even though there that is a natural thing that happens, or that that I I get. I just don't think of them that way, and I really do think of them as a processing of something. So it becomes more this space of almost processing information. And I love how you describe with Dubuffet. I mean, I love how you say um, abstraction or figuration. And then what was the next thing you said? You said with, with uh, the way Dubuffet would think about it, it would be, um, what was it that you just said? You said, uh, oh, it was so great. And I didn't write it down. <laughs> you know, he, he, not instead of abstraction figuration, you were saying something else. What, there, there was, to put it another way, you said, Oh yeah, yeah. Between documentation and speculation. You yeah, know? speculation. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that idea of documentation and spe uh, speculation because, in the, and its relationship to the concept of figuration and abstraction. Because I actually think the whole co the whole abstract the whole kind of idea of abstraction and figuration as a, as these kind of two as, as these two binaries is. Is, is 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 actually in and of itself somewhat a fallacy and falls apart. It doesn't hold like and 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 that's part of who we are in terms of we always as human beings are looking for an image where wherever that is whether and and whether that comes from a place of like evolution or what it's embedded in us and and it's and it's the most to me it's this kind of very uh, interesting aspect of what one sees in in the kind of constellation of marks and and how much how much con a, a, a group of marks actually starts to look like it refers to something and becomes a referent or a language to something or a sign for something or it breaks down and is just this kind of other other thing that feels similar to that but that whole simulacrum the whole kind of aspect of documentation and speculation and that and that idea embedding that or layering it on top of abstraction and figuration is super super interesting to me and i think my desire is to always be in between the two it's yeah. this space of 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 the blur or the kind of possibilities that exist in all those breaks and in the fractures between those binaries and and so that they're not necessarily propositions and they're not necessarily documentations but they're not propositions either they're they're in that space of kind of questioning what what is this like what is this and how does one get to the point of saying like how the hell do we keep doing this as human beings and how do we live within these atrocities over and over how do we how do we stand it how are we in this space and yet it's here and and that and that that really that deep contradiction of existing in that space and 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 the kind of the desire and the, the knowledge deeper of not going to the nihilist space but how that becomes such a part of the human experience especially within these kind of extractive repressive realities we live in and so i don't know that to me was is, is just an interesting place and for me i think it's about that in between space it's about the blur it's about the unknowing there it's about the about the illegibility of a reality it's about the illegibility of that condition it's about the, un, the incomprehensibility of it at the same time how do how does how does one get at that how does one try to make sense of that yeah um, yeah, I guess it's a, it's a whole project, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> to go back to the project. Yeah, yeah. No, but, uh, yeah I, I think this is super interesting because it's also like a way of kind of like uh, recognizing that you always need, you know, like a degree of imagination and fiction to see reality, you know, so the yeah. things that you usually oppose, you know, are actually complementary in a way, you know, like yeah. they very simply, you know, like uh, schematically. Um, yeah. Okay, so we, we have some questions. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, Dubuffet was opposed to high Western culture in the 1940s, but do we now have to have a much wider view of cultures, like street of graffiti culture? Um, I wanted to ask about the use of unconventional materials in Dubuffet's work and in Julie's. Uh, what inspires the use of particular materials in the mark making? 
yeah I mean, so so i think I, I i read two questions now in one so. okay so <laughs> i think like in terms of dubuffet and opposed to high western culture in the 40s i think that was the concept of the cult of the cultures but when you say do we now have to have a mi much wider view of cultures i think what I find super interesting is that I think there was always a much wider view of culture. And there was a lot of kind of, of, of knowledge of other forms of world making and visualization and, and aspects of culture. So graffiti was something that I think Dubuffet was interested in. I think the kind of bombed out ruins were something that was really it, it emergent. I think you talk about the desert, but I also think the kind of immaterial, the kind of lost materials or the kind of found materials that so much yep. was made from parts of mud, gravel, sand, mm -hmm. uh, mixing this stuff together, incising it, um, trying to make, trying to get back to this place of like what, like in, inventing something from within destruction. and. So I, I think that um, all those forms of culture were, are alongside um, these, this aspect. But I think, when, uh, I think what I find interesting is that Dubuffet, the, the kind of assumption that happened, and I think this is culturally and specific to the time, but that, that, that kind of assumption of culture being high Western culture, like yeah. that all other culture was not necessarily culture yeah. in that same way. And that's a super interesting kind of, hit part of the colonialist kind of extractive mm -hmm. project. And what I find Im Im interesting about that in, in regards to Dufay is the kind of what goes, going back to the Baldwin idea, the kind of enslavement or not enslavement, but the kind of, the, the kind of binding or bondage that that does on everybody within that context. So the mm -hmm. kind of incapa incapa incapacity to be able to, or inca incapability of being able to actually see that reality from oneself that, that actually, and so that kind of de desire of inventing new culture coming from that kind of the influence of the outsider artist or the, or the, you know, a South African artist or the street artist or whatever it is, this idea of the common man as being the kind of formative kind of des desire is was super interesting. So that's something that I find interesting and I think is still something that informs a lot of ways that people think around radical imaginary, um, mm -hmm. especially right now. And yeah. I also just, because you're, you're coming from France, right? So I think it's a really interesting time to, to be thinking about this again, not, not like in a post-Brexit UK, but also in this moment of the kind of raging, you know, identity politics that are happening in France that are being kind of brought on by a lot of the kind of aspects around migration and La Cité and that whole space. Yeah. So it's a really rich, in every European country, it's a different context, a different history, and different way of thinking around these. But my immigration and the history of colonialism is coming back to everybody in the yeah, same yeah. thing in this country. And so it's a it's something that we're negotiating. And I think that it's a you know it's a space of like the multitude that we have to really kind of all explore together. Um, and then in terms of inspires use of particular materials in the mark making, I think for me. Um, my interest was way more about the, in, in a point of departure, it's really interesting. It's like the opposite of Dubuffet because Dubuffet was like looking through destruction. And my effort was like how to use the most Cartesian kind of rational kind of materials to kind of go somewhere to like um, break down these ideas of the possibility of that. So I had the marks that fight with the architecture or the impossibility of mapping something and using these, the tools of architecture, rapidograph pens and mapping and the, the, these kinds of structures as try, to try and make sense of something that is you're not able to make sense of it. And so I was interested in playing with those contradictions, which is in many ways the opposite space of, or the other side of the co same mm. coin in a way. Yeah, very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, there's um, there's an, another question which is about our brut, um, which like so. What do you think about his relationship with the art he collected? Was uh, his art a kind of pastiche of the art he collected? Um, I don't know if you want to like really uh, answer to that. Uh, I, I well, can't. I think you would, you would probably answer that way yeah. better. I mean, I think I think you would know that history. I mean, to me, it seemed all about a uh, certain belief in trying to do a different type of world building. And, yeah. uh, but he, I think you, I think it'd be interesting to hear your response. To that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a kind of recurring question, you know, and uh, we don't know, you know, to which extent, you know, but pa pastiche is definitely not the, the, the right word or the word, the word I would use myself. Um, yeah. 
I think I think he, he always made clear, you know, that he was not doing Arbut, you know, like uh, he, he liked yeah. Arbut, you know, he, 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 he wanted to collect the work of these people, you know, to kind of like present it to the audience as well, you know, uh, but he... He, he knew that himself, you know, he was uh, uh, educated, you know, he went to uh, uh, university, you know, he studied at the Academy Julian and so on and so forth. So he couldn't be uh, an arbitrate artist. Now, you know, you will always be able to find, you know, like maybe some ideas, you know, or some mm. motifs, you know, like traveling, you know, from the work of an arbitrate artist. But I think the only thing, he, he, if we can say that he took from them, he, he, he said in the 1960s, um, uh, in 1962, when the, the, the collection returned, you know, from uh, uh, the, the, the US, you know, where it stayed for, for, for 10 years, um, he, he, he kind of like, he, he wrote a letter to Jean Paulin, you know, saying that uh, rediscovering these works, you know, made him kind of realize that artistic creation had to be, you know, like something like repetitive and immersive, you know, like in a way, you know, that mm -hmm. this all working in a certain degree of isolation, you know, they were somewhat, you know, like, I don't think this is the right word, but they, they were really obsessed, you know, with one type of motif, you know, like one type of uh, color, you know, one set of color, one set. Yeah, and yeah. I think he, 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 he tried, he was inspired by that, you know, and that, this is when you know, he, he started work on the, the Urloop series, you know, like the, the one yeah, that perhaps, you know, the most famous nowadays, you know, like uh, when you talk about Dubuffet. Uh, he worked for 10 years, you know, with the, the same motif, you know, the same three colors, you know, and right. did like paintings, architectures, theater, uh, everything with it. So I, I think, you know, maybe this is the where you can locate, you know, like uh, Dubuffet's inspiration with Arbrut. It's more with the modus operandi in a way, you know, the way of yeah. working than really, you know, like uh, the, the aesthetics or, or, or the, 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 the work they were creating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wasn't so, he also, didn't he, didn't he actually create that term too, our brute? Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he, he coined the term in, uh, in 1945, you know, like, so... I mean, I think, you know, he discovered Art Brut, you know, in the 1920s with the, with uh, the, the book, you know, like uh, Art of uh, Artistry of the Mentally Ill, you know, and, yeah. uh, uh, and, and, but then it's only like from, yeah, 1944, 1945 that he started collecting Art Brut and he, he, he went on a trip to Switzerland with Le Corbusier and uh, Jean Paulin, you know, like, the, so the architect Le Corbusier, and uh, they, they visited, you know, some like uh, uh, psychiatric hospital, but also the Museum of Ethnography. Uh, exactly. And, uh, and, and yeah, he, he named it Art Brut, you know, so yeah, it's, Brut is the, the, I think for him, you know, is the dialectical opposite of culture, you know. So, yeah. so, you know, so that, everything from that previous question about much wider view of culture, street or graffiti culture, all of that was our brute. <laughs> like that's what I that's what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he was including it in, in, in our brute, you know, like in a way yeah. uh at the beginning, you know, he was really interested as well in like in tattooist, you know, like so graffiti yeah. was, was really I, I think you know you could say that it was maybe the first his first encounter with with our brute, you know, because this is before his trip to Switzerland, he was already, uh, you know, uh, yeah. going like, walks, you know, in Paris to uh, uh, explore, you know, this graffiti. Obviously, you know, inspired yeah. by, you know, and the series of photographs, you know, that uh, he did, you know, totally. in the 1930s. Uh, but yeah, it's totally part of it, you know, like it's, uh, it's absolutely part of it. I think he was looking for other ways of creating, you know, like uh, mm. other means of creation, you know, like very um very simply you know yeah um so yeah and we, we don't have any other questions i think one, so. i have one more question that's related okay. to that <laughs> what was his what was his relationship with like um constant and the artists from the netherlands that were working like the situationists and that whole kind of movement like there seems to be some some form of a connectedness or interconnectedness in that in terms of but i don't yeah. really know yeah, yeah, so there's nothing we know about, you know, like Dubuffet's relationship. I mean, he was friend with Asger Yorn, you know, but it's yeah. like, not exactly, you know, I mean, he could have been friend with Guy Debord, you know, like he was in Paris, you know, at yeah. that time. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, like I've ever read anything, you know, like from Dubuffet, like talking about Guy Debord. I know he didn't like Isidore Izu, you know, with a sort of like pre-situationist, you know, the movement of yeah. the latest 
yeah. in Paris, you know, like, uh, yeah. Um, I think that there are some common grounds, you know, and especially, yeah. you know, like thinking of the city, you know, like I, yeah. I think, you know, like this exploration of the city, this idea that the, 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 the city as a sort of uh, palimpsest, you know, like uh, yeah. as a place where uh, both, you know, the, the, the memory of the past, you know, is embedded, but also maybe, you know, the energy, you know, to create, you know, something new, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, Dubuffet, the, what's quite uh, tricky, you know, with Dubuffet, when you research on Dubuffet, is like he was never mentioning anyone, you know. So basically what you're doing right now with me is something that Dubuffet would have never done, you know, like uh, talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the thing is, like, even when he was interested in, you know, like uh, some theories or something, he was always like very cautious, you know, in uh, saying it publicly, you know. So, huh. but. It's 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 a, it's a very good question and 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 a good uh, I think uh, uh, topic of inquiry. You know, like I mean, I, yeah. I, I should do some more research into that. You know, yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, well, there's yeah, one but... question I think here about the Floating Points album. Oh yeah. Um, but like that there. So I did a. I didn't do anything. I they they contacted me. Sam Shepard contacted me from Floating Points and at, at, with, after they had recorded everything, after everything was finished, asking if they could use the image of Congress, this painting I had made, as for the cover, and then telling me that he. We got on a Zoom and he explained to me that he really composed this using this painting, kind of going back and forth between the painting and thinking of it somewhat of a score, not really as a visual score, but he referred to it a lot, I think, in the way, that, and it's interesting to hear him talk about that. So I just became lucky to be in the, in the kind of the world building of that, of that, of that world with Sam Shepard and Pharaoh Sanders and the London Symphony Orchestra. To me, it's this great kind of, again, this aspect of multitudes and this kind of layering of different forms of language and efforts at, at, at getting at uh, something that exists, but trying to articulate that. And, and there are all these kind of abstract ways of trying to do that. Um, and so to me, I think that album is incredibly beautiful. I feel really lucky and fortunate to be next to it and in its proximity or in its, in its, in its orbit by any way. And so that's really how that, how that, um, how that, how that took place. Yeah. I, I, I listened to it recently, actually, like two weeks ago. Oh, you yeah. Know, like uh, yeah, there, uh, there's an artist I'm I'm working with, you know, called Josephine Cham. She she told me like, yeah, you have to listen to this album, you know, and uh, yeah, it's oh, brilliant. Cool. Yeah, it's really I, I, yeah, I used to listen to Floating Points, you know, like more is like techno house side, yeah. you know, like, uh, yeah. when I started, and uh, yeah, the, the the record is brilliant. But I didn't know at all that you collaborated somewhat, you know, like uh, I know, didn't, I didn't. I mean, I'm really saying I did, the only collaboration that took place afterwards, like it, it creatively, is um, they wanted to create some form of a of a video or a film or something that was a sound like a time based piece around the painting that could go along with the album, and the idea that we had was to do a very kind of um, slow pan um, out from the center of the painting, from really like the, the as detailed as it can be. And so there's this image, there's this there's this film that that. Trevor Sweeten worked on with with us that um, and we found him through Tacitus Dean. He works with her regularly and she's a close friend of mine. And he went to the Broad in LA where the painting was installed and actually did this very, very detailed, minute close up. And basically for the entire album, it's just this slow pan out. And not only do you see the whole painting and get to the edges of the painting, but you actually get beyond that. And when you get beyond that, there's a David Hammond piece, which is the flag, the torn up flag. And then there's the architecture of the space. So it becomes this whole thing within this kind of cultured space and societal, you know, social, social space. And as, as well within the kind of signs of this Hammond's flag and the painting has all these flags flying through it. So it was a very kind of, you know, um, you know thing that uh, serendipitous kind of thing that occurred that is really auspicious in that way. It was cool. Um, so if you get a chance to check out that film, it's a great kind of experience, not yeah. a weird experience to just watch and listen to the album at the same time and hear it differently. Yeah, now I think I will listen to the album in a very different way, you know, after this conversation. You know? <laughs> All <laughs> right, cool. Uh, well, I guess, you know, that's uh, that's the time now. Uh, okay. Um, 
um maybe you know i don't know maybe you could tell us what you're what you're working on right now or what are your next um, project yeah i'm working on an exhibition to that will open in berlin in the fall um in september berlin and a, and a drawing a group of drawings for a, a space in madrid but really i'm just um you know really put, kind of processing the the big show here at the whitney and Um, there's been a lot of events around that and um, thinking through that work, but then also trying to really push forward with, with new work in the studio and, and just go into that space of unknowing and, and, and imagining, you know, <laughs> to try and find something else. Like that's what people get. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, we won't find a better conclusion, you know, like to, to, to work, you know? Uh, it was a, it was a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Me too. Thank uh, you. Thank you as well. Super and, pleasure uh, to meet you. Yeah, and please, please come to see the show. You know, if you have a chance to come to London, uh, and I will let you know if I have a chance to come to New York as well. Okay, wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye.